Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to make a simple start game menu in Unreal Engine. When the game starts, it will first show the launch screen menu. Then the player clicks the start button, it will take them into a main menu. This tutorial will focus on how to build the menu environment and widgets. In next tutorial, I will explain in detail how I made reusable UI button widget. The smoky start button, the long save slots button, and the, the confirm buttons all look different, but they are based on the same master material. And if time permits, I will make a video showing how to create and manage multiple save slots in Unreal Engine. Let's start by creating the level and setting up the background for our menu. First, create a new empty level. We will use fog to create a nice gradient style background. Start by adding an exponential height fog to the scene. Then adjust the following settings. Scattering color. Choose a color that fits the mood or style of your game. Enable volumetric fog. This adds depth and uh, softens the fog effect. Fog density. Increase to 1 to make the overall darker. Height uh, for off. Adjust the value to tweak the light shape. Extinction scale. Adjust the value to soft the light. Feel free to experiment with other fog parameters to suit your need. Now, add a camera actor to your level. In the detail panel, set auto active for player to player zero, so the camera becomes active when the game starts. Then go to world settings, and set the game mode override to your own game mode, or use default game mode base. The default pawn class can be none or default pawn, since we don't need to control a player character for a menu, just a fixed camera view. Now press play. You will notice the screen starts from very dark and slowly gets brighter. This is because Unreal Engine's auto exposure system is adjusting the brightness like a real camera lens. To control this behavior, we will use a post-processing volume. Add a post-process volume to your level. In the detail panel, enable Unbound. This makes the post-process apply everywhere. Go to Exposure sections. The speed up controls how fast the exposure adjusts from dark to bright. The speed down controls how fast it adjusts from bright to dark. Even our level starts out dark, the engine thinks it's starting from a bright exposure target, like our fog, then adjusting to a darker actual scene. So we need to adjust the speed down to control how quickly the screen becomes visible. If set uh, speed down to 6, then play. Now you should see the launch screen brighten much faster. Now let's add a character or object in front of the camera to make the scene more interesting. You can use any mesh you like. For now, I'm using Unreal's mannequin. Place it in front of the camera. Give it uh, an idle animation and adjust its location and rotation so it looks good on screen. Next, add a spotlight to light the character. Move and rotate the light until it gives a nice highlight and feel right to your scene. Once you're happy with the placement, press play. 
And now we have a very simple but clean start game environment. Now we need to create a user widget to hold our UI elements. I'm using the common UI plugin because it gives more advanced control over UI elements. But if you are using regular user widgets, the process is almost the same. Start by creating a new user widget. Inside the widget, set an overlay as the root element. Then add a custom button widget to the overlay. In my case, this button is a customized widget I made. It used a procedural material to create an animation effect. I will cover how to build that material and the button widget in a separate tutorial. If you already have your own custom button widget, feel free to use that here. Otherwise, you can just use the common button widget. Now let's add the widget to the level so it shows up when the game starts. The simplest way to do this is through the level blueprint. Open the level blueprint. In the begin play event, use create widget, then add to viewport, and set input mode to UI only and show mouse cursor. Now let's play. And here is the result. We got our start menu UI on screen. Next, let's create the main menu screen. To save time, I duplicated the start menu widget we just made. Then I adjust the button size and the text and align to the top left corner. Wrap the button with a vertical box. This helps stack multiple buttons vertically. Set the vertical box to fill the full height of the screen. And add paddings to the top left and bottom. Then duplicate the first button and create another three buttons. Continue, load game, and quit. To space them, Add a spacer between the load game and the quit buttons. Set the spacer's rule to fill, so it can push the quit button to the bottom. Now we have our main menu layout. To test it out, swap the widget in level blueprint to this new main menu widget, then press play. And here is what it looks like. From here, you can start working on the widget blueprint to switch between the start menu and the main menu. You will also need to set up buttons click events to perform specific actions. I will cover them in a separate tutorial. Here is a quick overview of how I switch from the start menu to the main menu. In my project, I created a root layout widget that's added to the game very early. This root layout contains three stack blocks, and each of them organizes different layers of the UI, like game menus, overlays, or pop-ups. For start menu widget, first I push the start menu widget into the game menu stack. Then when the player clicks the start button, I push the main menu widget into the same stack. As for the new game, continue and load buttons, this involves saving and loading game data, which is a more advanced topic. I will cover them in a future video. That's all for this tutorial. I hope it gave you a clear idea of how to create the first screen for your game, and helped you to get started with your own main menu setup. I will continue making more videos whenever I have time, so stay tuned for future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in next video.